Jesus, it is through you that we live. And through you that we rise to live a life full of unmentionable praise for you. Lord, I pray as we stand in your house today that your spirit and your love washes over us, Lord, and that we cherish that love. That we really truly understand the power that that can have in our lives. Lord, I pray as we worship you, Lord, that that appreciation for your love, for all that you do for us, truly does come through. Amen. They say Jesus is King. Another big round of applause for King of Kings. I hope that the kids are out there. You were looking this way, I know, but I was looking that way, I must say, because over here, they were clapping in time, and they were getting in, but over here, it's the kids in the house, with the heart of God in the house, fantastic. Welcome to Inspire Church, showing people all they can become in Christ. Still a little bit of stuff left from a women's conference yesterday. <laughs> blokes, come on, by next Saturday, blokes, there's no trace of that left. It'll be bacon and blokes in the house, yeah? If you haven't signed up yet, guys, you need to do that sooner rather than later. Hey, it's great to be in the house. Move around, find something you don't know, don't know too well. Make them feel so welcome in the house this morning by your greeting. Move right around the house, right around. Uh, bumper month for us 
a bumper crop that's going to look that way. We've got tram aisles out there. And I have to tell you, mums, my nursery baby workers over there are just waiting. So whenever you're ready, they're, they're waiting for lots of cuddles. I have a serious want to welcome you this morning. And I especially want to welcome the families that are taking part in this child dedication service. So before I go any further, I want you to welcome them. A bit daunting coming up here with the lights and action, camera. Oh, there is a camera too. Um, but give them a warm welcome. We're going to start with welcome uh, Sophie and Trevor with their beautiful baby Alexander. Come on up. the baby of the real baby of the group today. Come on right up here. Turn around because they all want to see. He's just adorable. And now I'm lost to see. They don't care what I say anymore. And he's gonna sleep all the way through that with his bow tie. Oh my goodness. Alright, as equally gorgeous, I feel like I'm interested in teleconscious or fair equally as gorgeous. Um, Tiffany, John and Mordecai, come on up. <laughs> These handsome men, boys, look at them. The future leaders of our country, of our church. And last but not least, we have another gorgeous boy. What's with these boys? Come on, girls. <laughs> Stacey Terry with Harpo. I think they're going to bring all their boys because they want this the family him. Then come on up. Much of a stage fullness up here. So we've got Harper here. Look at him, why do I every time I see him, he never sleeps this boy. <laughs> Look at him. And sleeping Alexander and Mordecai taking it in there. This is just it is exciting. Babies are so precious and uh, a very precious part of our church family. So this morning these guys have asked to for me to walk them through a child education. No magic in this. I don't, I don't have anything, I don't have any magic water, but I do have some encouraging words for them. The biblical basis for dedicating a child is found in 1 Samuel 1, where a godly woman named Hannah prayed year after year for God to give her a child. And some of these guys may have prayed year after year, some of them may not have prayed at all initially. But that is said, Hannah prayed year after year. He answered her prayers and she gave birth to a son whom she called Samuel. When Samuel was born, Hannah prayed these words. I prayed for this child and the Lord has granted me what I asked of him. So now I give him to the Lord. For his whole life he will be given over to the Lord. So here in this faith community, child dedications are a time for parents like Hannah and uh, Tiffany and John and Sophie and Trevor and Stacey and Terry to commit themselves to raising their child God's way. We get a choice in this. We can take the our way and I think if any of those of us that are parents know that our way doesn't always work. Today these guys are saying we want to do it God's way. God's way is the only way. It's the easiest way, the most successful way. So this dedication service is a joint expression. So it's about these guys desiring to raise godly children, but it's also about you guys and your commitment as a church to empowering these parents in their calling. So they're not standing here alone. They get to stand in the spotlight, but they have you backing them. They've invited and welcomed to people who are here just specially for the dedication. But you guys up here, need to know that those guys down there are, are fully in this and their part in this is to empower you and support you as parents because we know that it's a, a tough gig, it's the most rewarding but certainly one of the toughest gigs you'll ever get. So this is also the 
the time as a church family with an opportunity to express our commitment. So this morning I've got a vow that I'm going to ask each of these parents to commit to. And then I'm going to ask you guys to commit to a vow that will be on the screen. So I'm going to start down here. Because I could just do a joint one. But you know what? This is personal for each of these families. This is personal for their little boy. So, John and Tiffany, do you promise independence upon God to train up Mordecai? Uh, 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 Sorry. <laughs> to train up Mordecai. It's swap your life. No, train up Mordecai to the best of your ability to give wise counsel, care, provision and support for his emotional, relational, physical and spiritual well-being. Sophie and Trevor, do you promise in dependence upon God to train up Alexander to the best of your ability to give wise counsel, care, provision and support for his emotional, relational, physical and spiritual well-being? And Terry and Stacey, we have got Harper here. Do you promise in dependence upon God to train up Harper to the best of your ability? because you read in the Bible and it says that there are those that long to see the things that we see. And when we're alive in this life, in this moment, we don't appreciate the things that we're privileged and honoured to see that God is doing, that Jesus is doing it through our lives. We just take it for granted that this is, this is just life. For generations before, those that are hearts ablaze for Jesus long to see what we see. So we need to take a moment to, you know, to realize 
the privilege that we have to live in this moment and know that it is God who has ordained each and every one of us to be in this moment, to be in this house, to be here right now, to receive what he wants to say. How do you move on? <laughs> on the chairs around about you'll find a pile of flyers, information that needs to, you need to pay attention to to be up to date with what's going on in life of the church. If you turned up here new this morning, it's the first time you've been here, you'd have seen the sign on the way in that says the Balbagas Church. But we're no longer the Balbagas Church. We're in transition. We're moving on. We're moving into new territory. We're now the Inspire Church. Drop the the Inspire Church. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We're building a, a kingdom, we're building a future, we're co-workers with Christ and we're moving and expanding. We're changing this building, we're expanding the building that way. You'll see on the, on the banners there, building a future. You'll see the little envelope on your chair, building a future. To do, to do that, we need everybody to participate. We need everybody to partner with us. So we would ask you to pray about your partnership with the Inspired Church. What is your involvement in that? You can use that envelope to pop in any offering that you believe that God is saying to you to participate in the building of this new building and the uh, forwarding of this kingdom. Also on your chair you'll find your care card. On the reverse of your care card you'll find opportunities where you can also partner with your time. Is there something that you feel that the Lord is leading you to do? To give of your time, to give of your talents, tick a box. See what there is there for you that you could honour him in service to the king, to service the one another as your brothers and sisters, to show your love, to show Jesus' love through you by serving one another. You can use your care card to send somebody encouraging note, or if you knew this this morning, you can fill that in with your information so we know who you are, and we can, inc we can include you in the life of this church. Men, if you're not already registered for men's breakfast on the 6th of September, you can do that after the service. The closing date for that is this Wednesday, so if you haven't done it by then, there will be no baking for you. Also, going back to the building project, I've got some good news for you. Some praise the Lord news. Somebody has kindly put their hand up to cover all the surveying costs. Now, I'm not sure how little or how large that is, but I think it's pretty huge. Praise the Lord. Give him a round of applause. Yesterday, if you want to hear Sue Crawford again, you can pop your details on the care card or Pastor Gordon will make sure you get a CD with the recorded message. If you want to get one of those to send to somebody, you think that's going to help them, you can fill it in on your care card. Watch do that, church knows will be on the screen. giving you the opportunity to bring in tithes and offerings, building fund pledges. Your care card's got in those buckets as well. As I, as I was about to launch into my offering talk this morning on Cherish the Love, because I was all sorted, God gives me a season of generosity. And that as a church, inspired church, we're stepping into a, a season of generosity. I believe we're in the season of generosity. I believe that we're already growing in that and in the understanding of that. As God calls us to build, as God calls us to, I suggested lying that out with dynamite this morning, but they got a little frightened, so a sledgehammer will suffice. As we go through that wall, as we build the next part, the original part, really, how it was always meant to be. We become the history makers of the future church. In 20 years time when they sit in that auditorium and they speak of the difference that it made in the lives of the people in this church today. The growth that happened. The journeys that were taken here and beyond here. And if you're like me, you feel like the elastic band is maybe almost at the end. God doesn't promise us the cushy ride. God doesn't promise us the comfortable. I don't want to be mediocre. 
I don't want to be a believer. I don't want to sit in 20 years' time in my nice fancy house and have not done anything for the kingdom. I want to be a history maker for the kingdom. And I believe that's the heartbeat of this church. God has given us this vision and he will provide. We are just the family that he's drawn together to do. Ask him. He has all we need. Ask him, God, how am I going to get to this building front? Ask him. And he will pour into this house. So much. As we bring our tithes faithfully, which we do, church, he promises us, we'll give you more, full to overflow. Step into it. Leave fear at the door. Join in unity. And be blessed. Be blessed. As we understand the depth of his love. And a love not just for us, but for the thousands of living stones that he's bringing yes. to our neighbours. Let's stand together, church. During the singing of this song, the buckets will be passed around. So you can place your tithes, your care cards, and your offerings.
Yep, top stay, and then the, the Saturday morning before that, there'll be bacon being eaten here, and talk about some other things there, got a guest speaker down for that. Uh, the thing is, we won't stop building a future at all, but I do find it amazing that the sovereign Lord God, this is, this is the God, the same God, that created the heavens and the earth, that God I'm talking about, you know, and seated in the heavenlies, and he's keeping all the planets spinning, and uh, he, he's keeping everything on track that we can live. That, that great sovereign God, uh, uh, he should include us in his plans to build his church. We are fellow builders with God. Doesn't that blow your mind? My, my Bible tells us we're fellow builders with God. He's included us in his plans to build. Think about that. 1 Corinthians 3, 6 and 9. Uh, the Apostle Paul says, I planted the seed, <coughs> Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything but only God who makes things grow. The one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose, and they will each be rewarded according to their own labor, for we are co-workers in God's service. Uh, you are God's field, God's building. So we are co-workers with God. That just blows my mind. We are fellow builders with God. God is the master builder, guys, and we are the trades assistants with him. So I look out and I see trades everywhere. <laughs> trades assistants, people working with God. This is just amazing. You would think that perhaps uh, we may get in the way of the master builder who actually knows what he's doing, parents. Because you, you get this. Yeah, when you had, hey, weren't those kids up here? It was amazing this morning. That harbour, he was born to the stage, you know. <laughs> that man, that's that week's crowd already. Yeah. He's going to take over. Wow, they're all, they're just, all your kids, guys. We're, we're building a future. We, you're doing a different one, aren't you? I'm not doing that. <laughs> I didn't want to hear Fantastic. Yeah, it, it's amazing. And you parents know, when, when you have little kids like this, and, and dads, mums too, they get in the kitchen, right, and they want to help make the cake, bake the whatever you bake, and, and you want to include them, because that's good parenting, right? But they stuff it up, don't they? They get in the way, and you know, this this way. I think I'll do the baking when they're having a nap, right? Yeah. And, and, and dads, you, you're working with tools, and little guys, don't go to get me bigger. The, the studio tools are borrowed and bring them back then, but when they little guy, and, and you think, hey, they're, they're going to muck it up, they're going to damage my tools, they're going to damage themselves, you know. And I think I'll wait till they're having an afternoon nap and then I'll do a bit of work. And I think, hey, what? And God probably thinks that. I could do all this while they're asleep tonight. <laughs> and when they wake up in the morning, I won't mess up what I'm trying to do. But he can do that. He's included us in his plans. In fact, we are his plan. We are the living stones with which he is building. Now one day Jesus uh, walked along with his disciples and as he walked with them, he talked with them and taught them and he asked them a question. He said, who is everyone saying that I am? And they go, well, you know, some people reckon that you're John the Baptist, risen up from the dead. John had just been beheaded a, a little while earlier. Yeah, John the Baptist, come back. Some others think you may be uh, Elijah the prophet, come back. Or maybe Jeremiah, one of the other prophets. And like that, and Jesus said, but who do you say that I am? And as usual, the, uh, the Apostle Peter, the one who turned out to be the Apostle Peter, is the one who spoke up and, and uh, he gave on behalf of uh, everyone else in the group his idea, and that's what he said. Matthew 16, verse 16 to 18, Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but my, by my Father in heaven, and I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not overcome it. The foundation on which Jesus will build his church is the revelation that he is the Christ, the Son of the living God. He's going to, salvation is found in no one else. You can only build on Jesus, that he is, is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Uh, for no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. There is no other name. It's just Jesus. Jesus will build his church upon this revelation. He is the master builder. He is building his church. He continues to build his church. And it's not as if all the living stones with which he will build are already in the house to continue the building. 
He's still gathering living stones. Uh, we are living stones, but it's not as if the whole lot is done and dusted and all the living stones are here. Uh, the ministry of Jesus Christ is not just to keep the already converted happy and feeling cared for. Oh, if not they care for me so nice at that church? The ministry of Jesus Christ and his church is to engage with the already converted as fellow builders in Jesus' building team to continue to build his church. So there's an engaging going on with all the current living stones. It's not like, yeah, well, now I'm saved, I'm in the house, and I sit back and relax, and they make good cappuccinos here, and I just have a cappuccino, and sit back, and I'm feeling so cared for in the church. <laughs> That's not how it is. You have to be so cared for by one another, serving one another, but we are to be building with living stones. Jesus continues to build his church. That's scripture. Uh, Jesus said, uh, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And I think sometimes we, what we want to do, think, oh, the gates of hell, they're coming out after us, those gates are. Uh, and the gates are charging down the road and they're going to take us on. Well, I've never seen gates come moving down the road. The whole design of gates is to say, put, gates are not on the attack. They're not on the offense. Gates are made to defend. They are moved to there. They stay there. Sometimes, you know, we think all these gates of hell. We hear the word devil and go, oh, the devil, the devil's out there. He's out the word here. That's why people are uh, not getting on with one another. Oh, 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 the devil's here. That's why people are feeling bad. Oh, oh. And they give the devil all this glory. He, he, he's not worth that glory. He's not even worth you thinking about him. Don't give him that much headspace. And, and, and the gates of hell. And see, what, this, what Jesus is saying is, we're going to bowl them over. Sharon's going to come in with her dynamite and her sledgehammer and knock down the gates of hell. Because she's done it before, she's going to do it again. And together, we're going to be issued with sledgehammers and dynamite to knock down the gates of hell. They are not on the offense, we are on the offense. We are, trying to, we are knocking down the gates of hell to release the captives. So they might come back to Jesus Christ and know all that, who they can become in his name. And ladies who are here, yesterday you heard something about that. Hey, you did. Yes, you did. Gates of hell, we're going to knock them down. The church is on the offense. We are fellow builders with God. Awesome privilege, isn't it? We're fellow builders with God, the master builder, and we have his trades, his trades assistants. What does he want us to do? Yet, well, he's building a future, and he wants us to be part of that. And 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5 to 6, which we read before, the Lord has assigned each to his task. Everyone's got a task. And uh, some of you say, hey, I've just got that thing Catherine mentioned this morning on the back of that card. It's got all these ideas there about what I can volunteer for. Well, well yeah, you can. You can. So, well, I'm going to do a couple. Yeah, that's good. Keep on doing that couple. Do them well. And, but some others may be not doing any or just doing one. You say, I'm going to be part of this. I'm going to be part. Because the Lord has assigned each to his task. God wants his church to grow. He assigns us tasks. And the major two tasks he assigns us are planting and watering. So you ask, what does planting and watering look like? And I'm glad, glad, glad you asked that question because I, I've got the answer and I want to tell you what it looks like. Uh, together, planting and watering, you put those two together, uh, they make up, uh, they form what is called the Great Commission. And I'm just going to tell you what the Great Commission is in case that's what's trying to go on past you never knew what it was, but you will this morning. And that's broken down into two, two things, planting and watering. Jesus had been crucified, dead, buried, raised from the dead, and now he's about to ascend back to the glory of heaven. And before he does that, he gathers the gang together. The 11 of them left, one has checked out. Uh, he, he, he went and hanged himself. Judas, he's no longer with them. So that's 11. And he gives them the final instructions before he goes back up to heaven. So this is what he says, Matthew 28, uh, 18 to 20. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you, even to the close of the age. So what we've got there is one command in that great commission, and it's make disciples. And of that command, there are three components to it. And the first one is as you are going, and implied in that is sharing the gospel as you are going. And the, and, and the second one is baptizing those who have responded uh, to the gospel planting seeds. And the third one is teaching them to <laughs> obey everything I have commanded you. And, and you think about that, because the baptism, often people get baptized, you know, big baptistry over here, and they think they graduated. Believers' baptism is not a graduation. It's a beginning. It's like getting an place to drive. Yeah, it's just the beginning. And, and it means, oh, maybe P place. 
because now, now you can drive. But if you're not the best driver on the road, people leaders, come on, they are they? They aren't. You've got a lot to learn because you've got no experience yet. And, 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 and so it's just the beginning of a heart. It, it doesn't take you where you might drive yet. It's just the beginning. And baptism is like that because uh, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I'm with you that the close has a whole lot of teaching to be done. And so planting, uh, that is as you are going, sharing the gospel, planting gospel seeds, inviting people to church. Right? That's, that's planting. And watering. Uh, and, and notably, it's baptizing people, but it's not really the water. And it's teaching uh, them all the commands of Jesus, everything he said. If there is no planting, you can water all your life, and nothing's going to grow, but you never put your seeds in the ground. Yeah. If you've only got one seed in the ground, you can bring all the water you like. You can have, have a, a, a Friday, the 29th of August. 2014, and there were like 50 mil of rain coming down, and you only got one seed in the ground. Guess how many is going to grow? Only one seed. So I play a whole lot more seed. Let's see if you're not planting anything, nothing's going to grow. If we had to build a future uh, in partnership with God, then we, 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 let's ask, not just somebody out there, we need to do a whole lot more planting. We need to be telling people about Jesus and about his church. Uh, God gives the growth to our planting, but we are to plant and we are to be urgent in season and out of season. So we need to share Jesus and his gospel and use about his church, invite people to church more and more and more and more. The, the ladies were in this, uh, in this conference yesterday, my wife was up, Lara was up here talking, and, and she was talking about the because, uh, the bracelets, you know, and what a great talking point, wear a because. And guys, you can wear them. Uh, I wore one, little black ones that were broke. And they've got the big white ones now, and wear those, they're, they're, they're interesting. Lara and I were in, uh, she was telling the story here yesterday, we were in the queue at the cinema over at Rockingham, they cinemas, and, and we engage with this guy, we, we engage with people, because we think that God puts us with people to talk to them. That's what we think, we've got this whole idea. You, you don't have to whip out your, your iPhone and whip out Facebook that person. They're right there, you talk to them. Yeah. Don't have to whip out your iPhone and go, oh, I get the coolest thing I ever had on Facebook. Uh, and that's, that's all cool. But you actually talk, and we began to talk to this guy, and he goes to Lara, because, I said, you wristband, because, because what? Well, she told him, because what? She told him, age 21, she gave the whole kick and caboodle, she, she was good at borrowing the sledgehammer of Sharon, she went for it, and the walls down, walls were coming down, Lara was talking, you can do this, you say, I'm not as good a talker as you are, just invite them to church. They probably said, well, you know, I went when I was a kid, it was boring as, so, well, I don't know which one you went to, try and try ours. They've got sledgehammers down there, they're knocking walls down. Come on down, see them at that church. You can invite, you can invite, you can invite. We are fellow builders with God in building a future, and we are building with living stones. We're building upon the foundation, which is Jesus Christ. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. As you come to him, the living stone, capital L, capital S, the living stone, Jesus, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Because we are fellow builders with God, we are to build with living stones. That is, the people that God sends our way, uh, the people that we invite, the people that we are brought into contact with through opportunities God gives us, we are to build with these living stones. Now, yeah. loads of living stones around. And so we began this series of messages titled Building a Future, Building a Future, and, uh, and I know you thought it was just about Sharon knocking that wall down building out there, right? Building a future is more than this building. Uh, this is part of it, but we are building with living stones. And those who were in church last Sunday morning, morning and evening, and those of you who get my emails will heard more about this Hunana campus and, and think that that's, that's scary stuff. Some of you are thinking, it's building a future. I never asked for Hunana. I had an idea about building another campus. I did not choose Hunana. I chose two other spots. And God weighed in and I opened this opportunity in Hunana. And, and, and I, it's a God thing. And, and I have so many meetings with those people recently more to go yet. Yeah, in fact, next weekend is Father's Day on a Sunday, and they're 
because they're a voting church, we've got a not. Uh, they are, they need to vote themselves out of existence and vote to invite us in. And of course, they, they, they're down that track, I've got to tell you. And there were, I think, six women in our conference yesterday from uh, that one on church. And uh, on the next Saturday, I think it'll be six guys come to the breakfast, eating bacon with us, guys. Yeah. One of them rang up last Wednesday. Uh, Mandy normally takes the calls in front of the office, but she was over in this building doing something for women's conference, I think. And so Catherine answered the phone, and we, we got a swear box thing going on now. Uh, if you mentioned the previous name uh, for the coin, and so we're on about inspire, we, we teach ourselves inspire, inspire, inspire. We say that, we go to bed at night, go, inspire, 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 inspire. Wake up the first thing, we inspire, inspire. Don't have to say that other name. Which is very interesting, by the way. This just, I did this wedding on Friday, and I looked in the front of my, my wedding, the, the reg, reg, register book, and uh, in uh, 1994, I changed my credential from my previous life, so to speak, 1994, uh, to what the name of this church was then, Coastal Christian Life Centre. That's in the front of the book. In 2004, October, October 2004, we changed the name to the Valdez Church. That's that name. No, I don't get to swear thing for that, because I just told you something. And, <laughs> and then in 2014, what we do, we change again. Every, what? Ten years. So hang on. It's inspired for probably 10 years. Yeah. I can't guarantee anything after that. There's other reasons I can't guarantee anything after that. <laughs> this guy rings and Catherine goes, It's my church, good afternoon. Oh, so professional. Whenever I ring and Catherine or Mandy answer when I'm out somewhere and they answer, I go, It's so professional. <laughs> and she did. And the guy said, Rick here said from uh, Powerhouse, oh, he said, maybe I should say Inspire Church in Quinana, because that's what it's going to be. <laughs> Can I come to the men's breakfast? And Catherine signed that dude up. And, uh, and he, his wife was here yesterday, and I saw him here in our bookshop after the women's conference, the, the people in the place in there buying their wristband. Rick was in there. And they go, Rick, what are you doing here? He said, well, I think this is my church now, isn't it? <laughs> okay. We're going to Quinana, apparently. Now, think about this. Now think about this, in the midst of all the organizational and physical stuff, uh, this is about reaching more and more people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. I know the phenomenon thing is going to freak some of you out, you know, but actually, uh, while we need volunteers, and I've already seen 25 of you, and uh, that's what we need to start crank that up, I've only got 19 people left there, that makes 44 straight on day one, right? And now, uh, you'll be lost on, like one day you're on the 8.30, one day you're on the 9.30, one day you're on the 10.30. El Vanto sorts all that out, apparently. Uh, it'll, it'll send you a dodgy email from Gordon last night, but that's okay. <laughs> I'll be going up the road, I'll be preaching with three services. Right? Preach at 8 30, get in the car, someone's got the motor running, preach at the 9 30, come back, preach at the 10 30. Now, I could do that. I wondered why it was I could, but Sue Crawford, talking to women yesterday, just drive why I could do that. And you'll need to get the CD to find out again. Oh, that's four dollars. <laughs> This is about building with living stones. This is about winning more and more people to Jesus. That they might surrender their lives to him and enter into receiving all that he has for them. That they might become all that they can become in Christ Jesus. And it is the issues of the day, my friends. It's the issues of the day and how we handle them in our relationships with one another, in our financial setting, whatever it is that gives us grief. It's how we respond to the difficulties of our day that enables us to become more and more the people that Jesus wants us to become. If we're going to get the difficult issues, but it's how we respond to them and it's how we respond to being team players to be fellow builders with God, you know, in the physical building project, knocking down walls, putting more in there, whatever it is, and launching a second campus and reaching more and more people for Jesus Christ and becoming part of the team that enables people to be taught and to grow in Christ's likeness. Well, uh, this is the way it's always been, by the way, right throughout the Bible from Genesis through to Revelation, that's the way it's been. So in the old covenant thing, in the Old Testament, it was like that. Uh, God wanted people to surrender to him, get part of his building project, becoming, winning people to him. And in Haggai's day, Haggai the prophet lived in the same day as Zechariah the prophet, and the same day as Nehemiah the builder, and in the same day as Ezra. And each of those guys got a book written after them in your Bible, and, and God said to people, I want you to in a building project. And, and the people were reluctant starters. And the first half of Haggai chapter 1 is talking about that, and 
and, and, and they go, I'm like, hey, God, don't you know we built my own house now? I'm starting to get my own house together and starting to look good. And you think they want to siphon up some of my money down to build one of yours? I need to put it in here. And the very reluctant starters, you know, and that's the first, and, 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 and I, I, I'm, I'm onto this, and a little study's been done, and I've got a little diagram up here for you. It's about the laggards and that, I've talked about it before, there we go. All organisations, not just churches, this is, the study's been done. And so whenever you've got something new coming up, 2% are the innovators. Just a little bit, they go, hey, let's take new ground. Let's do something different. Immediately, 10%, uh, you know, in a little while, then the early adopters, they get on board and say, hey, let's go with that. And, and you know, as a leader, I'm looking for that 10%. But I'm looking beyond the 10% because I'm looking for that next 60% because that's a big slab of your organisation. And, and they, they, they don't, they're not on on day one. They're not on day two. But by day 10, they go, hey, looks like everyone's gone for this, and I think it's going to be a winner, and I'm, I'm with you in this. And then there's 20% late adopters. They go, Ooh, I'm not sure I'm going to be part of this ever. I'll just hang around and see what's going on. They just hang around and hang around. They go around around the mulberry bush a few times. Then there's the 80%. They go, I'm never doing this. They dig their heels in. And they go, you have to fight me on this. And you want to know what grief is, Gordon? That's me, the capital G, and I'm not doing it. Well, as Haggai faced this, so I'm glad he did, because see, he's the poor and I can watch what he did. Haggai chapter 1, verse 13, 14. Then Haggai, the Lord's messenger, he's the preacher of the day, steps up the platform. He gave this message of the Lord to the people. Here it is. I am with you, declares the Lord. Isn't that such a cool message? Because yeah. we don't want to go anywhere if God's not going there with us. I am with you, says the Lord. We don't want to do anything if the Lord's not in on this. I am with you, declares the Lord. So the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, son of Josedach, the high priest, and the spirit of the whole remnant of the people. The whole remnant, everybody's getting on board now. And they came and began to work on the house of the Lord Almighty, their God. So I'm praying that the spirit of the living God will stir up our spirit. That's what happened in Haggai's day. That's what happened in Zechariah's day. Uh, that's what happened in Nehemiah's day. That's what happened in Ezra's day. The spirit of the living God came and stirred up the spirits of the people and they began to build. And I'm praying that the spirit of God will stir up our spirits. We will build with living stones, following his calling uh, in and through the ministry and the mission of Inspired Church. I'm praying for that. How about you? Yeah, let's pray for that this morning in Jesus' name. Zechariah 4 6. Zechariah's preacher. This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. We're not going to get this job done in our own strength. If God the Spirit's not doing it, it won't get done. What are you, mighty mountain? He, he, he clears a mountain, it's an obstacle, huge man. What are you, mighty mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you will become level ground. So the, yeah, yeah, it looks like there may be some obstacles here, but we're not going to wipe them away in human strength, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. I'm going to clear the deck. Any obstacles, Holy Spirit says, I'm going to move them out of your way. This mountain shall re be removed before so rubber You will become level ground. A few weeks ago, I spoke about pioneering and uh, told you a story about my granddad who over 100 years ago in the, the Burnett Valley in Queensland pioneered. It was like very thick forest and all he had was a wagon and two horses and a uh, wife and three kids on board. The youngest one was my father, two years old at the time, and uh, a can of water and uh, some cheeses and bacons. Bacons! They had bacon on board and uh, they had a tent and they had an axe and they had a saw and chopped down a few trees where they pitched their tent and they began to pioneer. Didn't have much at all, very little. It's one of those kids did, you know, running around the forest there. And I showed you that after a decade or so they built this house. Let's put that house up there. I brought up in that house. My granddad built that. And uh, it's called a Queenslander, by the way, and I had to say that, and I said that in the 830 service. There's a guy in the 830 service, it's his first time here, right? He just moved up from Cairns to here. And he, so he said to me at the, at the coffee break between the service, he says, I know those houses. I just moved up from Cairns. They're on stilts and, and they're high off the ground. And 
I got the big veranda and like that. And I go, yeah, my granddad built that one. And uh, I read my father's journals. Like my father's a blogger back then, you know. Only 16 years of age, he was blogging, but he didn't know what blog was. And I've got his journals. And the things that man did, that 16 year old, you know, their days were long and they built fences and they built cow yards and they built barns and they built houses. And, and, and the pioneers, they started with nothing. And when we started this church, you know, back in 1992, we started with nothing. We borrowed one of those old overhead projectors for the first few weeks. You know, one they got big A4 uh, transparencies on them. We had someone sitting right in the front row there with the ukulele and whack that transparency on and get it upside down sometimes. And sometimes we got there upside down and we'd sing the best we could. And, but we started with, with nothing. And, and we added people to that baby church, you know, bit by bit by bit. And we grew bit by bit. But we had to, we had to, we had to bump everything in every Sunday. Because of the higher facility, well, nothing there. When we got there, we put we put in modules for a stage. We put in the sound system. We put in the overhead projector. We put everything in, and that yo know, after the service was done, guess what? We're packing all up on a trailer, truck it out again. And now it's all so cool, isn't it? And we get so comfortable with coolness, we don't want to do anything more. Well, we're going to need to do some more because I'm calling back the pioneer spirit in Jesus' name into this house. Is anyone else going to join me in the pioneering spirit? Because God is calling us to that. In Zechariah's day, the mountain of which the prophet spoke, the scholars believe there was to be a mountain of rubble on the building site. It's going to have to be moved before we can build there, you know. He said that mountain's going to be moved. You think it can't be moved? Well, what can we can do? It's Holy Spirit bulldozer. Holy Spirit bulldozer's coming in. And, and I'm thinking as we embark on this next exciting leg of the journey that God is calling us to, there'll be someone here that just is, we just saw the, the laggard demonstration there. There's going to be someone. Uh, they've got little mountains of rubble in your hearts and minds say, hey, it's too big. Not just this building project, not just the living stone. Man, you don't know me, Gordon. I'm a, I'm a fearful person. We'll get, God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and love and self-control. God said, I want to get rid of the little rubble mountains in your mind. I'm going to remove the mountains of rubble, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. I've got another little diagram up here. I'll pinch this. Yeah, no, not the one. That's the mountains of rubble. They're gone. Hey, isn't that cool? Thank you, Jay. I got that off you. You didn't know that. It's pinched off tonight. Look at that horsey. See, it's a problem. Someone told that horse, I'm tying you up. And the horse believed it couldn't move from there. I think that horse is tethered to that little plastic chair. If that horse wanted to gallop, that chair's going with it. Bouncing on the paving, and that horse would be able to gallop. I think there's a whole lot of horsepower in the house. And sometimes we get tied back by something in our head that said, what's some other thing that's holding you back on your head? Sometimes we get tied back by what's in our head, so this cannot be done. Someone just rose up yesterday and told me that we got the surveyor stuff covered right here. Amen. What else is God covering? This mountain shall be removed. We're getting ready to land this message now. So, so pass your seats, safety belts here. You know, when the Spirit of God grabbed the people in Haggai's day. They got enthusiastic. And the Spirit of God touched their spirits. And I was thinking about that because, you know, the, word, the English word enthusiasm uh, comes from two Greek words. Uh, the first one is en, which means in. You get that's pretty easy, isn't it? And, and the second one is, uh, it comes from the Greek word for God, theos. So enthusiasm essentially is in God. When your spirit and my spirit is in God with his spirit, we are enthusiastic. You can't shut us down. We've got a big grin all over our faces like you wouldn't believe. We've got like ants in our pants, can't sit still. We're going to cover more ground for Jesus. We're not going to stop because the spirit of enthusiasm, which is your spirit and my spirit, in with God's spirit, in tune and in tandem with it. We're fellow builders with God. He's calling us to put our hearts into all that he's calling us to do. Matthew 6, 21, where your treasure is, there will be your heart also. Treasure and heart go together. 
and my friends, uh, this is the, can we get a little testimony here? I'm going to anyway. It is such a privilege and a pleasure to partner with you folks. You know, that, this is what I live for, to work with you. And I see what happens here on any given Sunday, you know, I see all those kids coming in at the, at the, when we did the child education. I see the parents up here holding babies, they go, oh, next generation's moving in. And, and I see the people with the green shirts, and I think they've been serving over in kids' church this morning, and here they're back in this, I see the people in the sound desk, and I see some of those people in the sound desk were here just about all day yesterday doing stuff. Uh, I see people doing the logistics, and one of them was here all day yesterday. I see people doing all sorts of things that make this church work. And it's a pleasure and a privilege to work with you. But here, that's what adds up to that. Together, we are co-workers with God. Altogether, we are co-workers and we are fellow builders with God. Isn't that fantastic? It is so fantastic. I'm going to pray about Father in heaven. Thank you. Thank you for calling us to be co-builders with you. Lord, I know you can get this job done without us because you actually know what you're doing but you've called us to partner with you. And Father, this morning, I want to pray for everyone in this house, for those who know for sure that they've surrendered their life to you, Lord Jesus, and have that intimate personal relationship with Father God, for those who know that for sure, uh, that this morning they will step up, they will step up, and they will step into all that you have for them, and they will align their spirit, our God, with your spirit, and know the joy of enthusiasm in the work of God. Father, for those who have not yet surrendered to Jesus or are not sure if they have, or they don't know whether they have or not, and want that personal, intimate, uh, faithful relationship with you, our Father God, uh, touch them this morning, Holy Spirit, and cause them to surrender to you in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Let's stand, church. Let's stand. We serve such a wonderful God. Our God is healer. Our God is awesome. Our God wants to take us with him to be fellow builders with him in Jesus' name. And this morning, uh, I just want to put this call out here. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, this, is, this is a wonderful opportunity when you come to church, not just to come in to take a with the church today, I know good, because there is no good, no, but one, actually. We're here, and God wants to engage with us, and wants us to engage back to him. And so when we, it's just a great opportunity that we call the altar call. And for those of you who are not sure if you've surrendered to Jesus, you don't know if you have or not, and if you don't have the right relationship, why not make it certain this morning, come and stand down the front. And, and for those of you who say, we've not done that, I just want to engage in a deeper, deeper way. I want to know the enthusiasm of God as my spirit uh, it, it is in tune with his spirit. And I want to move forward and be a fellow builder of God. Come and stand down the front this morning. Would you do that? I'll do that in Jesus' name. Let's sing together.
corner over here of the red corner. And uh, for those who come forward too, we can ask you to move over to the red corner because there are folk over there, prayer warriors, who are going to pray for you and pray that the Spirit of God will line up with your spirit and your spirit will line up with his spirit and that you'll be empowered to do all that he has for you. Would you do that this morning? Now, this becomes a place of ministry in here, so any conversations you want to begin on have begun, want to continue, that will be in the foyer, in the bookshop. We've got some new uh, stock in during the week, uh, and the coffee shop's open. You can get a cappuccino. If you met anyone new this morning, don't mind the cappuccino and the cushion to do that, and bless them. And don't forget tonight, we've got a great service back here at 6 o'clock at night. Bless you guys. Have a fantastic day. Look forward to seeing you again soon.